This is my current favorite way to have a baked potato. This is kind of a breakfast baked potato. You hollow out half of a baked potato, mix up the inside with salt, pepper, and sour cream, and stuff it back in. Top it with some green onions, cheddar cheese, bacon, and put it in the oven for, I don't know, like 10 minutes. <laughs> when it comes out, it looks like this. Aha, still runny yolk, ta-da! I like to put a little bit of herb sour cream on the top. Ah. It is salty from the bacon, rich and creamy, and having that soft yolk is mwah. The thing is, I know that around the world, there are tons of different preparations for the humble baked potato, ones that I have probably never even heard of. So today, we are going to look at five different baked potatoes from five different countries and get inspired. I'm excited. <laughs> Hi Beryl, hi everyone. My name's Amanda and I live on the west coast of Sweden in a city called Gothenburg. Today I want to tell you about my favorite topping for baked potato. It's called Skagen Rara. Skagen, a place in Denmark, and Rara meaning mix. Allegedly, the chef who came up with the recipe was sailing past Skagen in Denmark when he came up with it and that's why it's called Skagen Rara. In Sweden we call baked potato a bakad potatis with bakad, meaning baked, and potatis, meaning potato. The mix itself is a mayo-based shrimp salad with mayonnaise, fresh dill, lemon juice, and cooked shrimp. Some prefer to have a bit of sour cream in it, and finely diced red onion. If you're feeling extra fancy, you can even add some roe. It's a common mix all over Sweden. You can buy it pre-made in stores or make it yourself at home. It tastes salty, fresh and light, even though it's mayo-based, since there's a lot of dill in it and the lemon juice as well. This dish tastes like summer and hangout with my friends. Baked potato with skagandara is light, fresh, salty and simply delicious. If you try it, I hope you enjoy it and yeah, thank you very much. Hey Doa, bye bye. I am sensing a theme, Sweden. I also had a shrimp salad on a hot dog when I did a hot dog video. This seems pretty bomb though. I love dill, so I went heavy on the dill. I know a lot of people don't like dill, but they're all wrong. You know, the thing is good, this is good. I love shrimp salad though, so we're safe here, right? The shrimp salad is really nice, mayonnaise-y and herby. It's super simple to make because it's like, what, three ingredients and then plop it into a potato. The, the work is really in just roasting a potato, you know, because that takes forever. Even though a baked potato is kind of heavy, the shrimp salad is pretty light tasting and so it doesn't feel like too heavy a dish. It actually feels like a pretty nice balance. I definitely stuffed this puppy up because I just think there is nothing sadder than an understuffed baked potato. It's like when you get a plate of nachos and you can just see all the chips, like, no, 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 no. I don't wanna see the chips. I wanna see toppings everywhere. Just like this, I want a stuffed potato to be overflowing. It needs to be a bounty. So expect some bountiful potatoes in today's episode. I love this. I think with certain foods, like a baked potato especially, I don't really like explore that much. I kind of was raised with baked potato with cheese and sour cream and butter, the end. You know, maybe a little bit of bacon and some chives for colors and crunch, but never in my life would I have said, let's slap a shrimp salad on top of that and call that a meal. I don't see why not, this is amazing. Mm. I'm happy, I'm inspired. This is gonna be a good episode, you guys. A good episode. My name is Vicky. I am 31 years old and I am from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The dish I wanna talk with you today is called a uh, four cheese baked potato. In Brazil, baked potatoes are called batatas recheadas, which translates as a potato with filling or filled potatoes. So, four cheeses here, or quatro queijos, is a very common filling that we use. It's usually made with mozzarella, provolone, uh, gorgonzola, which is a kind of blue cheese, and either requeijão or catupiry, which is a Brazilian soft cheese with a very similar texture to cream cheese, but a very particular taste. 
and it's very salty and rich and creamy and I think the first time I ate gorgonzola was probably with four cheese because the thought of eating blue cheese as a kid was a little scary to me so four cheese was probably the time when I felt brave enough for the first time and if you like potatoes and cheese and honestly who doesn't I think you should try it because you will really like it I'm going to rename this the naughty potato because <laughs> there's a lot of cheese in here. My stomach hurts just a little bit thinking about it. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was inappropriate. <laughs> We're going to have to put a rating on this video for extra sexy cheese pulls. <laughs> if you don't like cheese, you won't like it. But there is an area person, few and far between, who really dislike a cheesy potato. My god. There's not much to say other than the aforementioned, my god. This is delicious. I, uh, I have to applaud the idea of putting crunchy potato on top of potato. There's something, there's something really kind of inception-y about that. Wow. So this is love. No, 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 no. So this is love. I'm no stranger to kachapiri cheese. It is like a very soft cream cheese. If you like spreadable cheeses, you will love kachapiri. It is very good on pizza. That is for certain. Uh, very good in potatoes. It just keeps being stretchy. Oh. Mm. My fingertips definitely burned off a little bit while I was scooping out the interior, but I would say the injury was worth it because this is just like, it's just so good. This is the kind of dish where like, I, I could just keep eating it so mindlessly because every bite is savory and cheesy and delicious. Oh, Brazil hats off. That was good. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Lisa Jane and I live in a small market town in the West of England, right on the Welsh border in a beautiful part of the UK called the Y Valley. The dish that I want to share with you is coronation chicken jacket potato. So coronation chicken is a rich, creamy mayonnaise with curry. So a curried mayonnaise that you add fruit and some spring onions to, and it's absolutely delicious as a filling for a baked potato or a jacket potato, as we call them in the UK, because the jacket is like the skin of the potato. It's a really nice kind of combination of the hot, potato and then the cold mayonnaise and chicken filling uh, with that like kick of curry spices. It's really, really lovely. Um, and it's, it's definitely one that's been around my whole lifetime. So Coronation Chicken has a really interesting uh, backstory and history. It was a dish that was created for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth in 1953. There was a big coronation banquet at Buckingham Palace and the royal chefs wanted to uh, create a new dish. Then they wanted to add in like a reflection of the Commonwealth. So in that they kind of pulled in some of the spices from India, also newly independent country uh, in 1947. You should definitely try Coronation Chicken. It's so easy to make. It's creamy, it's flavorful. It's just really my favorite filling. A chicken salad for a most auspicious occasion. I think it's pretty funny that they're like, there's a new queen, let's invent something. And they were like, chicken salad, like England. <laughs> I, I'm excited though, it smells really good. And again, like I'm out of my baked potato comfort zone or I should call it the jacket potato. I like that this is his jacket. I don't know why I just gendered my potato. Anyway. Let's dig in. I gotta get past all my topping. Oof. She is creamy in here. Mm. 
this is actually, okay. I was questioning, like I have many times, every time I put raisins in something, I think, why? What are we doing here? Nobody asked the raisins to come. And yet, I think every time I think, oh, I like the raisins. Maybe I actually do like raisins and things and I need to stop being so judgmental. The apricot is really good. I haven't had an apricot since I was a kid and I was definitely snacking on them while I was making this. Chicken curry salad is delicious. And I, you know, having it in a sandwich to me is totally, yeah, like we have that here in the US. On the potato though, it's 10 times better because the potato is so warm. And with that cold chicken salad, you have that like hot, cold sensation going on in your mouth, which I'm finding to be very exciting. It feels weird to say that I'm like excited by a jacket potato, but I'm gonna leave that in. I think this is an interesting thing that we can all learn about, but curry is actually not an Indian dish. A lot of British people, when they're having Indian food, they'll say, let's go out for a curry, or even the idea of curry powder, that doesn't exist in India. Obviously there are curry leaves, but the concept of curry as a dish is actually a British invention. It is an anglicized version of the Tamil word kadi, which means sauce. When the British were in India, they pretty much saw all of Indian food as a sauce and they just called it all curry. The point of that is really just to kind of teach you something new. So the next time you think about saying curry, maybe you look up the name of the dish and give it its due honor. <laughs> Going back to the coronation potato, I love adding the dried fruits. It's got a little bit of sweetness. The curry powder is spicy. Everything is just like a really fun bite. And now that summer's coming up, if you are like, oh, I'm gonna be making some chicken salad, just pop it on top of a baked potato with your leftovers and boom, you got a great dinner. Hi, my name is Bartek and I live in the city of Poznan in Poland. The dish I want to share with you is pyry z gzikiem, which means potatoes with gzik. So most common way of eating this dish is hot boiled jacket potatoes served with a fridge called gzik in the middle. But I think it only gets better when you bake your potatoes. Uh, words pyry and gzik come from a dialect typical to Greater Poland, which is the region that my city Poznan is located in. Pyry means potatoes and gzik means typical white uh, carrot cheese called twaruk mixed with sour cream, onions, radishes, uh, dill and chives. I like contrast of hot and cold in this dish and also how simple it is. Uh, Pyrus gzikiem are common mostly in middle west part of Poland which is considered to be Polish where, uh, land of potatoes. Uh, it's usually eaten in spring and summertime because it's rather light and also vegetables are the best in spring and summer. Uh, it is also a very popular bar dish where you can enjoy it as a side to a beer or a vodka, obviously. <laughs> and I think you should try it because it's very easy to make, very cheap and also very delicious. So I hope you like it and bye! She's saucy. <laughs> Smells so fresh and yummy. I also just really, really love radishes. Uh, this like slaw seems so good. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, this is tongue ticklingly good. You know when you eat something and you're immediately like, I want more of it in my mouth. Oh my God. I don't have time to talk to you all. I have to eat this now and get as much of it in me before I get full. This might be one of the best uh, potato combos I've ever had. It is like crunchy and fresh, but super, super creamy. So the mixture with the cheese and the sour cream and then all of the herbs, it's like everything that I've ever wanted on top of a potato and never knew that I wanted on top of a potato. Wow. That's incredible. This episode has me thinking of the most fun dinner party ever. Hear me out, okay. 
You make all these different toppings, get the tinier, tinier sized potatoes and do a baked potatoes around the world party. Everybody can put all these different toppings on, try all these things. Like these are all very easy toppings to make. And so it wouldn't be too difficult to assemble like five or six different ones. Like leave some comments about other toppings and I mean, I wanna have this party. I will have this party. I think the idea of being able to have a dinner party that explores the world of this one food, this is the easiest way to do it. I have spent a lot of time, you know, perfecting how I cook for this show. So far, this has been the most fun, the least like stressful. The kitchen has never been swelteringly hot because I've got stoves going all over the place. It's just been like casual, fun, and everything is tasting so delicious. So I recommend you doing your own baked potato around the world party because it's totally exciting and delicious and easy. And make sure you include this one. Hi, Beryl. I'm Ashley. And I'm Tolga Han. We're married. We live in New Jersey. I'm from Illinois originally. And I was born and raised in Istanbul. Uh, the name of the dish is kumbish. Traditionally, Turkey is not well known for its potato dishes. But, uh, this is baked, baked potato. I love really strong flavors. And what I love about kumbir is that you can put whatever you want in it. It's one of those everything but the kitchen sink kinds of recipes. Tolgan likes to put lots of cheddar cheese, lots of butter. I like to put garlic and pickled vegetables on it. First of all, it's a street food. Uh, you can go to a restaurant, uh, you can eat it there as well. Even though it's a street food that we don't usually make at home, uh, maybe Toby was feeling a little bit homesick. It's also a very inexpensive, uh, easy to make food at home. So that's why we started making it at home in yeah. Illinois. So again, I think uh, everyone should give us a try. It is so quick and easy to make. It is the ultimate comfort food with lots of carbs and butter and cheese. It is delicious and easy to make. Thank you for listening. Thank you. We hope you enjoy. I've heard tale of the Turkish baked potato and I have seen versions online that have like hot dogs, corn, peas. I think that this is nice. It's kind of like the entry level version. I wouldn't have been mad if there were hot dogs on this, but we've got pickles and we've got mayonnaise and we've got olives. So yummy, yummy. I think this is a fork and knife potato. So I'm gonna do it on the table. Cheers. Yeah. Well, look, I love salty and pickled foods. You put a pickle on anything. I feel like I say this every time I eat something with a pickle and it's great. Ooh, the olives are very good with the mayonnaise. I love that this is a more sour vinegary take on the baked potato. All of the other potatoes that I had were very much in the creamy camp. I like that this one has a lot more bite to it. It's exciting. I never thought that I would use words like excited as many times as I did in this episode talking about potatoes, but you know. Emptying out the half was a little bit nerve wracking. I was so nervous I was gonna break through the, the wall of the jacket, but I think it like turned out okay. I'm not sure how creamy the inside is supposed to be, but I kind of mashed it with my spoon. I think, I think it's good. Pickles, they can go anywhere and do anything. That's, that's the lesson that I'm really learning. This episode has been absolutely fabulous. It was a joy to make, truly. So thank you to everybody who participated. I hope that you all have been inspired. The recipes are always in the description for you to have your own baked potato party at home. I will definitely be having one. In the meantime, here is another potato episode for you. And since I was just talking about pickles, here is my pickle pizza episode to prove that pickles can really do anything. I will see you all next week.